The Nicaraguan Revolution Spanish, Revolución Nicaragüense or Revolución Popular Sandinista encompassed the rising opposition to the Somoza dictatorship in the 1960s and 1970s, the campaign led by the Sandinista National Liberation Front FSLN to violently oust the dictatorship in 1978–79, the subsequent efforts of the FSLN to govern Nicaragua from 1979 until 1990 and the Contra War which was waged between the FSLN-led government of Nicaragua and the United States backed Contras from 1981 to 1990. The revolution marked a significant period in Nicaraguan history and revealed the country as one of the major proxy war battlegrounds of the Cold War with the events in the country rising to international attention. Although the initial overthrow of the Somoza regime in 1978–79 was a bloody affair, the Contra War of the 1980s took the lives of tens of thousands of Nicaraguans and was the subject of fierce international debate. During the 1980s both the FSLN a leftist collection of political parties and the Contras a rightist collection of counter-revolutionary groups received large amounts of aid from the Cold War superpowers respectively, the Soviet Union and the United States. The Contra War ended after the signing of the Tela Accord in 1989 and the demobilization of the FSLN and Contra armies. A second election in 1990 resulted in the election of a majority of anti-Sandinista parties and the FSLN handing over power. Background Following the United States occupation of Nicaragua in 1912 during the Banana Wars, the Somoza family political dynasty came to power, and would rule Nicaragua from 1937 until their ouster in 1979 during the Nicaraguan Revolution. The Somoza dynasty consisted of Anastasio Somoza Garcia, his eldest son Luis Somoza de Bale, and finally Anastasio Somoza de Bale. The era of Somoza family rule was characterized by rising inequality and political corruption, strong U.S. support for the government and its military, as well as a reliance on U.S.-based multinational corporations. <laughs> Rise of the FSLN In 1961 Carlos Fonseca Amador, Silvio Mayorga, and Tomás Borga Martínez formed the FSLN Sandinista National Liberation Front with other student activists at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Nicaragua UNAN in Managua. For the founding members of the FSLN, this was not their first experience with political activism. Amador, first general secretary of the organization, had worked with others on a newspaper, broadly critical of the Somoza reign titled Segovia, consisting of approximately 20 members during the 1960s. With the help of students, the organization gathered support from peasants and anti-Somoza elements within Nicaraguan society, as well as from the communist Cuban government, the socialist Panamanian government of Omar Torrijos, and the social democratic Venezuelan government of Carlos Andrés Pérez. By the 1970s the coalition of students, farmers, businesses, churches, and a small percentage of Marxists was strong enough to launch a military effort against the regime of longtime dictator Anastasio Somoza de Bale. The FSLN focused on guerrilla tactics almost immediately, inspired by the campaigns of Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. Penetrating the northern coast of Nicaragua, the Rio Coco, Boque Raiti campaign was largely a failure. When guerrillas did encounter the National Guard, they had to retreat, with heavy losses. Further operations included a devastating loss near the city of Matagalpa, during which Mayorga was killed, which led Amador to a prolonged period of reflection, self-criticism and ideological debate. During this time, the FSLN reduced attacks, instead focusing on solidifying the organization as a whole. Topic. Overthrow of the Somoza regime In the 1970s the FSLN began a campaign of kidnappings which led to national recognition of the group in the Nicaraguan media and solidification of the group as a force in opposition to the Somoza regime. The Somoza regime, which included the Nicaraguan National Guard, a force highly trained by the U.S. military, declared a state of siege, and proceeded to use torture, extra-judicial killings, intimidation and censorship of the press in order to combat the FSLN attacks. This led to international condemnation of the regime and in 1978 the administration of U.S. President Jimmy Carter cut off aid to the Somoza regime due to its human rights violations Amendment. 
In response, Somoza lifted the state of siege in order to continue receiving aid. On 10 January 1978, the editor of the Managua newspaper La Prensa, and founder of the Union for Democratic Liberation, Udel, Pedro Joaquin Chamorro Cardinal, was murdered by suspected elements of the Somoza regime, and riots broke out in the capital city, Managua, targeting the Somoza regime. Following the riots, a general strike on January 23–24 called for the end of the Somoza regime and was, according to the U.S. State Department staff at the U.S. Embassy, successful at shutting down around 80% of businesses in not only Managua but also the provincial capitals of Leon, Granada, Chinandega, and Matagalpa. In the words of William Dewey, an employee of Citibank who witnessed the riots in Managua, on the 22nd of August 1978 the FSLN staged a massive kidnapping operation. Led by Aidan Pastora, the Sandinistan forces captured the National Palace while the legislature was in session, taking 2,000 hostages. Pastora demanded money, the release of Sandinistan prisoners, and a means of publicizing the Sandinista cause. After two days, the government agreed to pay $500,000 and release certain prisoners resulting in a major victory for the FSLN. Revolts against the state continued as the Sandinistas received material support from Venezuela and Panama. Further support would stem from Cuba in the form of arms and military advising. In early 1979 the Organization of American States supervised negotiations between the FSLN and the government. However, these broke down when it became clear that the Somoza regime had no intention of allowing democratic elections to take place. By June the FSLN controlled all of the country except the capital, and on 17 July 1979 President Somoza resigned and the FSLN entered Managua, giving full control of the government to the revolutionary movements. <laughs> Sandinista regime Immediately following the fall of the Somoza regime, Nicaragua was largely in ruins. The country had suffered both war and, earlier, natural disaster in the form of the devastating 1972 Nicaragua earthquake. In 1979, approximately 600,000 Nicaraguans were homeless and 150,000 were either refugees or in exile out of a total population of just 2.8 million. In response to these issues, a state of emergency was declared. President Carter sent $99 million in aid. Land and businesses of the Somoza regime were expropriated, the old courts were abolished, and workers were organized into civil defense committees. The new regime also declared that, "...elections are unnecessary," which led to criticism from the Catholic Church, among others. <laughs> Economic reforms The revolution brought down the burden the Somocista regime had imposed upon the Nicaraguan economy and that had seriously deformed the country, creating a big and modern center, Managua, where Somoza's power had emanated to all corners of the territory, and then an almost semi-feudalist rural economy with few productive goods, such as cotton, sugar and other tropical agricultural products. All sectors of the economy of Nicaragua were determined, in great part if not entirely, by the Somozas or the officials and adepts surrounding the regime, whether it was directly owning agricultural brands and trusts, or actively setting them to local or foreign hands. It is famously stated that Somoza himself owned one-fifth of all profitable land in Nicaragua. While this is not correct, Somoza or his adepts did own or give away banks, ports, communications, services and massive amounts of land. The Nicaraguan Revolution brought immense restructuring and reforms to all three sectors of the economy, directing it towards a mixed economy system. The biggest economic impact was on the primary sector, agriculture, in the form of the agrarian reform, which was not proposed as something that could be planned in advance from the beginning of the revolution but as a process that would develop pragmatically along with the other changes economic, political, etc. that would arise during the revolution period. Economic reforms overall needed to rescue out of limbo the inefficient and helpless Nicaraguan economy. As a third world country, Nicaragua had, and has, an agriculture-based economy, undeveloped and susceptible to the flow of market prices for its agricultural goods, such as coffee and cotton. The revolution faced a rural economy well behind in technology and, at the same time, devastated by the guerrilla warfare and the soon-to-come civil war against the Contras. Article 1 of the Agrarian Reform Law says that property is guaranteed if it labored efficiently and that there could be different forms of property. 
state property with the confiscated land from Samosists cooperative property part of confiscated land but without individual certificates of ownership to be labored efficiently communal property in response to reinvindication from people and communities from mosquito regions in the atlantic individual property as long as this is efficiently exploited and integrated to national plans of development the principles that presided agrarian reform were the same ones for the revolution pluralism national unity and economic democracy the Nicaraguan agrarian reform developed into four phases. First phase, 1979, confiscation of property owned by Somosists and its adepts. Second phase, 1981, agrarian reform law of July 19, 1981. Third phase, 1984-85, massive cession of land individually, responding to demands from peasantry. Fourth phase, 1986, agrarian reform law of 1986, or reform to the 1981 law." In 1985, the agrarian reform distributed 235,000 acres 950 square kilometers of land to the peasantry. This represented about 75% of all land distributed to peasants since 1980. According to Project, the agrarian reform had the twofold purpose of increasing the support for the government among the campesinos, and guaranteeing ample food delivery into the cities. During 1985, ceremonies were held throughout the countryside in which Daniel Ortega would give each peasant a title to the land and a rifle to defend it. Topic: <inaudible> Cultural Revolution. The Nicaraguan Revolution brought many cultural improvements and developments. Undoubtedly, the most important was the planning and execution of the Nicaraguan literacy campaign, Cruzada Nacional de Alfabetización. The literacy campaign used secondary school students, university students as well as teachers as volunteer teachers. Within five months they reduced the overall illiteracy rate from 50.3% to 12.9%. As a result, in September 1980, UNESCO awarded Nicaragua with the Nadezhda K. Krupskaya award for their successful literacy campaign. This was followed by the literacy campaigns of 1982, 1986, 1987, 1995 and 2000, all of which were also awarded by UNESCO. The revolution also founded a Ministry of Culture, one of only three in Latin America at the time, and established a new editorial brand, called Editorial Nueva Nicaragua and, based on it, started to print cheap editions of basic books rarely seen by Nicaraguans at all. It also founded an Instituto de Estudios del Sandinismo Institute for Studies of Sandinismo where it printed all of the work and papers of Augusto C. Sandino and those that cemented the ideologies of FSLN as well, such as Carlos Fonseca, Ricardo Morales Avales and others. The key large-scale programs of the Sandinistas received international recognition for their gains in literacy, health care, education, childcare, unions, and land reform. Topic. Human rights violations Topic. Repression According to the Heritage Foundation, censorship of the press under the new Sandinista regime began almost immediately. La Prensa, an independent newspaper of the country, was censored, despite its previous role as vocal opposition to the Somoza government. No information regarded as negative towards the Sandinistas was permitted to be published. All reporting was required to be submitted to government censors seven hours prior to printing. The Heritage Foundation claims that a spy on your neighbor system was instituted early in the Sandinista reign. This system promoted citizens to report any activity deemed counter to the revolution to the authorities. Those reported faced harassment from security representatives, including the destruction of property. Similar systems were apparent in Soviet bloc countries. On the contrary, the French journalist Victor Dedige, who lived in Managua in the 1980s, notes that La Prensa was generally sold freely and that the majority of radio channels were anti Sandinista. <laughs> <laughs> Allegations of antisemitism According to the Heritage Foundation, following the FSLN rise to power, it was claimed that Nicaraguan Jews became an often targeted group for discrimination. Jewish citizens faced physical attacks, confiscation of property without cause, and arbitrary arrests. A further human rights violation arises in the government treatment of the Mosquito people. 
A high-ranking member of the Nicaraguan military intelligence stated he left the country after having been ordered to kill 800 Mosquito prisoners, and to frame the deaths in a way that resembled combat fatalities. Over 15,000 Mosquitos were forced to relocate, their villages were destroyed, and killings not only went unpunished, but were promoted. However, investigations conducted by the United Nations, the Organization of American States and Pax Christi between 1979 and 1983 refuted allegations of antisemitism. Some Jewish were expropriated for their collaboration with the Somoza regime, but not because they were Jewish. Moreover, the high-ranking Sandinista and mayor of Managua, Herdy Lewitz, was of Jewish descent but didn't affect their image. Contra war. Although the Carter administration had attempted to work with FSLN in 1979 and 1980, the more right-wing Reagan administration supported a strong anti-communist strategy for dealing with Latin America, and so it attempted to isolate the Sandinista regime. As early as 1980–1981 an anti-Sandinista movement, the Contrarevolución or just Contras, was forming along the border with Honduras. Many of the initial Contras were former members of the Somoza regime's National Guard unit, and many were still loyal to Somoza who was living in exile in Honduras. In addition to the Contra units who continued to be loyal to Somoza, the FSLN also began to face opposition from members of the ethnic minority groups that inhabited Nicaragua's remote Mosquito Coast region along the Caribbean Sea. These groups were demanding a larger share of self-determination and or autonomy but the FSLN refused to grant this and began using forced relocations and armed force in response to these grievances. Upon taking office in January 1981, Ronald Reagan cancelled the dispersal of economic aid to Nicaragua and on 6 August 1981 he signed National Security Decision Directive No. 7 which authorized the production and shipment of arms to the region but not their deployment. On 17 November 1981, President Reagan signed National Security Directive 17, and authorized covert support to anti-Sandinista forces, and armed conflict soon arose, adding to the destabilization of the region which had been unfolding through the Central American civil wars in El Salvador and Guatemala. The Contras, heavily backed by the CIA, secretly opened a second front on Nicaragua's Atlantic coast and Costa Rican border. With the Civil War opening up cracks in the National Revolutionary Project, the FSLN's military budget grew to more than half of the annual budget. The Servicio Militar Patriotico Patriotic Military Service, a compulsory draft, was also established. By 1982, Contra forces had begun carrying out assassinations of members of the Nicaraguan government, and by 1983, the Contras had launched a major offensive, and the CIA was helping them to plant mines in Nicaragua's harbors to prevent foreign weapons shipments from arriving. The 1987 Iran Contra affair placed the Reagan administration again at the center of secret support for the Contras. 1984 general election The 1984 election took place on November 4. Of the 1,551,597 citizens registered in July, 1,170,142 voted The null votes were 6% of the total. International observers declared the elections free and fair, despite the Reagan administration denouncing it as a Soviet-style sham. The national averages of valid votes for president were Daniel Ortega, Sandinista National Liberation Front 66.97% Clemente Guido, Democratic Conservative Party 14.04% Virgilio Godoy, Independent Liberal Party 9.60% Mauricio Diaz, Popular Social Christian Party 5.56% Alan Zambrana, Nicaraguan Communist Party 1.45% Domingo Sanchez Sancho, Nicaraguan Socialist Party 1.31% Isidro Tellez, Marxist-Leninist Popular Action Movement MAP ML, 1.03% Esquipulas The Esquipulas Peace Agreement was an initiative in the mid-1980s to settle the military conflicts that had plagued Central America for many years, and in some cases notably Guatemala, for decades. 
It built upon groundwork laid by the Contadora Group from 1983 to 1985. The agreement was named for Esquipulas, Guatemala, where the initial meetings took place. The U.S. Congress lobbying efforts were helped by one of Capitol Hill's top lobbyists, William C. Chasey. In May 1986, a summit meeting, Esquipulas I, took place, attended by the five Central American presidents. On February 15, 1987, Costa Rican President Oscar Arias submitted a peace plan which evolved from this meeting. During 1986 and 1987, the Esquipulas process was established, in which the Central American heads of state agreed on economic cooperation and a framework for peaceful conflict resolution. The Esquipulas II Accord emerged from this and was signed in Guatemala City by the five presidents on August 7, 1987. Esquipulas II defined a number of measures to promote national reconciliation, an end to hostilities, democratization, free elections, the termination of all assistance to irregular forces, negotiations on arms controls, and assistance to refugees. It also laid the ground for international verification procedures and provided a timetable for implementation. Topic Uno Nicaraguan historian and leading social investigator Roberto J. Cagina describes Uno as follows, Since the very moment of inception, under the political guidance and technical and financial support from the government of the U.S., the existence of Uno was marked by grave structural deformations, derived from its own nature. In its confirmation concurred the most diverse currents of the Nicaraguan political and ideological range, from the liberal conservative traditionally anti-communist and pro-U.S., to Marxist-Leninists from Moscovian lineage, openly declared supporters of class struggle and enemies of capitalism in its superior development stage. The constitution of the UNO coalition for the 1990 general elections was as follows sad face, exact transcription and translation of the names of these political parties needed three liberal factions, PLI, PLC and Poly 3 Conservative, ANC, PNC and APC 3 Social Christians, PPSC, PDCN and PAN 2 Social Democrats, PSD and MDN 2 Communists, PSN pro -Moscow and PC de Nicaragua pro -Albania 1 Central American Unionist, PIAC Topic C Also Contras Corinto, Nicaragua Cuban Revolution Daniel Ortega Dirty War Guatemalan Civil War Iran Contra Affair Murals of Revolutionary Nicaragua National Guard Nicaragua Nicaragua v United States Salvadoran Civil War Under Fire Film United States Embargo Against Nicaragua Topic Notes and References Topic Bibliography Emily L. Andrews, Active Marianismo, Women's Social and Political Action in Nicaraguan Christian Base Communities and the Sandinista Revolution. 1 Grinnell College Research Project, 1997. Retrieved November 2009. Enrique Bermudez with Michael Johns, The Contras Valley Forge, How I View the Nicaragua Crisis, Policy Review Magazine, Summer 1988. David Close, Salvador Marti Puig and Shelley McConnell 2010, The Sandinistas and Nicaragua, 1979-2009 N.Y., Lynn Rehner. Dodson, Michael, and Laura Nuzzi O'Shaughnessy 1990. Nicaragua's Other Revolution, Religious Faith and Political Struggle. Chapel Hill, N.C., University of North Carolina Press. XII, 279p. ISBN 0-8078-4266-4 Schmidley, William Michael. The Most Sophisticated Intervention We Have Seen, The Carter Administration and the Nicaraguan Crisis, 1978-1979. Diplomacy and Statecraft, 2012-23 No. 1 pp 66-86. Primary sources Catherine Hoyt, Memories of the 1979 Final Offensive, Nicanet, retrieved November 2009. This is a first-hand account from Metagalpa, also contains some information on the general situation. Has photographs showing considerable damage to Metagalpa. 2. Salvador Marti Puig. Nicaragua. La Revolución Enredada. Lerbos de la Catarata, Madrid. Oleg Ignatiev. The Storm of Tescapa. In Borovic and Ignatiev, The Agony of a Dictatorship. Progress Publishers, 1979, English Translation, 1980. Topic. Further reading Mizellas, Susan. Nicaragua, June 1978 to July 1979. P. 
Pantheon Books, New York City, 1981. First edition. Nicaragua, a people of flame. Geo, Volume 1, Charter Issue, 1979. Take Sarah, Ib. Nicaragua, a norte de um pays. Mansheet, Rio de Janeiro, July 7, 1979. Topic. External links Library of Congress United States, Country Study, Nicaragua, especially Chapter 1, which is by Marisabel Braz. Retrieved November 2009. Lewis Project, Nicaragua. Retrieved November 2009. Nicaragua, Whose Side Are We On? from the Dean Peter Krogh Foreign Affairs Digital Archives.